Hello and welcome to Cooking with PMQ. I'm your host Brian Hernandez and today I'm joined in our kitchen by the one, the only, the dough doctor, Tom Lehman. Tom, thank you so much for coming by today. Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, what are you going to show us how to do today? What we're going to start out today doing is we're just going to do a plain white American style pizza dough. And uh, you know, having worked in pizza all these years that I have, I've become very lazy. And I like <laughs> to do things the easy way. Uh, we always say, as you get older, you work harder. No, you work smarter. Yes. So I've got other things to do in my shop. And rather than standing around mixing my dough and making it long and difficult and complex, I like to keep it as simple as possible, following the KISS principle. And that's what I'm going to show you today, how simple it really is to make a pizza dough. And what we're going to use, we're going to use a, a process that we developed about eight years ago that is gaining very widespread popularity throughout pizzerias, independent pizzerias, and even in some of the large chains where they're dealing in a commissary operation. And we refer to it as the delayed oil process. And by that we hold the oil back, we do not add it right up front, and we begin mixing the dough, and after the flour has completely hydrated, we will then add the oil and continue mixing for another eight to 10 minutes. So with that, let's proceed to putting our dough together. Perfect, so uh, just real quick before we get going, what are we gonna need to uh, make this really simple dough uh, recipe here? Well, what we've got here, we, we have pre-weighed pre -weighed our ingredients. We got our flour, salt, sugar. We have instant dry yeast. Uh, I'm a, a believer in instant dry yeast. There's fewer things that go wrong with it. Could you use fresh, compressed, or brick yeast? Absolutely. Uh, the amounts that you use would be different, but it's just so much easier to use instant dry yeast. Do you need to put it into water? No. It's another opportunity for something to go wrong. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add it right on top of the flour. All right, perfect. So how much flour do we have right here? We have, this dough is going to be based on 10 pounds of flour. And we're going to actually give you guys the uh, baker's percent. We'll put it in the description of this video. And this Something is, that's very easy to use, lets you know exactly how much you need to use versus your flour weight. So. And this is going to yield about 16 pounds of total dough weight. Okay, perfect. So um, off the top of your head, what do we got here as far as the weights on our ingredients? Okay, what we have here, uh, rather than actual weights, let me give it to you in percentages. Flour in baker's percent is always shown as 100%. 100%. Salt, 1.75%. Expressed another way, of this total flour, 1.75% of it is going to be salt. Perfect. Sugar, 2%. 2% sugar. And yeast, 0.375%. So make sure you have a really good scale to get down to grams, or obviously you'll be baking big, large batches, so, um, but 0.0375% is minute it's, compared to 100%. In this case, for us, it's 17 grams. Okay. Or another way to look at it is uh, a little over half an ounce. Okay. And then we got for our oil, what's the percentage? The oil is 2%, okay. and that's a pretty standard amount. I realize that a lot of formulas are made without oil, but if you leave the oil out, you're really cheating your dough on flavor or your finished crust on flavor. You know all the uh, great aromas that come off of your pizza during yeah, baking? Yeah. Well, those are aromatics. They're lost into the air. Mm -hmm. And if you have the oil, the oil helps to entrap some of those flavors. So you, you bring those flavors to your customer. And that's what we really want to do. So the smell that's going out into the air actually gets trapped within the pizza crust and becomes taste. Exactly. Which makes it a better experience for everybody. So yep. perfect. All right, so step one. Step one. Uh, a lot of people put the flour in first, and if you do that, your mixing time is going to be longer. And I like to say that every time you turn that mix around and run it, uh, you're just wearing it down. It's like a light bulb. It's certified for so many hours of operation. Right. So is your mixer, but we don't know how many. And <laughs> so what I want to do is run it as little bit as possible. I want to keep my mixing time short. And we found that by putting the water in first and then the flour, we actually cut about three to four minutes off of our total mixing time. So we're gonna add our water first. Okay, we're gonna come over here to our nice Univix mixer. 40 quart? No. Yeah, 40 quart. All right, so we've got the water in there. Step one, step two, okay. Tom, what do we got? Optional, some people like to put the salt and sugar into the water. Now for this one, I'm gonna show you how to do that. 
So the salt, we have the salt and sugar. Okay. And we're just, this could be added right on top of the flour if you wanted to, but we're just gonna, for demonstration, we're gonna put this into the water. Remember what I said? I'm inherently lazy. <laughs> I work smarter, not harder. At this point, some people will take a hand whisk and they'll whisk it in. Mm -hmm. No or need to do that. Around this. Yeah, there's no need to do that. No, that, okay. That's wasted effort. Really? Okay. Absolutely. Very nice. Okay. So we have that. Now we're going to go ahead and we're simply going to add our flour. All right, so that's five pounds. And that's here five. We got ten. And here goes the second five for a total of ten pounds. You know, and in your pizzerias, you'll probably be doing this at a much larger scale. You can obviously use the baker's percent that we've given you and just dump the whole 55 pound bag into your mixer. And now we have the ID wire instant dry yeast, and that goes right on top of the flour. No need to make a suspension, put this in warm water, stir it, really? leave it set. I'm inherently lazy. <laughs> I just want to put it right on top of the flour. I've been wasting so, so much time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We've got other things to do in the pizzeria. <laughs> right. All right. So the only thing that's missing now is my oil. And this is where the fun begins. Okay. All right. So we're going to set this, shut this up. And now we're going to start mixing at low speed. All right. Uh, low speed. We're going to raise our mixer. How long, Tom? Uh, let's set our time for two minutes. All right. We'll go two minutes, low speed, and here we go. Now while this is mixing, what I want to explain to you is what we're looking for is we want to hydrate the flour only. We've got the water in there. We're just trying to hydrate the flour. Let that water or the flour pick up all the water. And once it does that, we're going to add the oil. All right, so basically, yeah, just a thorough mix until it can't mix anymore. If you notice here, some of that flour is starting to hydrate. It's starting to look kind of lumpy. The expression that we like to use is it looks shaggy. Shaggy. I like that. As this continues to mix, you see that appearance continues, and it's starting now. You don't see as much dry flour in there anymore. It's starting to actually hydrate a little bit better. Right. It's more of a cohesive unit at this point. Yeah. Getting closer to what we like to call a dough ball. So we're but it still looks a little bit dry, as you said. Still, still dry. Right. And once we uh, start mixing dough, I'll explain why we use this process. All right, so, this is gone two minutes. Yeah, if we, take, if we take a look at this now, what we've got, this is coming up off the bottom of the bowl. Everything has been hydrated. There's a little bit of white flour in there, not much. That looks pretty good. I mean, it's, I'd have a hard time calling this a, a dough. It's not cohesive or anything. Right, right. But this is what we're looking for. This so, is what I call a hydrated mass. Okay, still very dry, but hydrated. The flour has been hydrated. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to start mixing. Okay. How long do you want us to put this one on for? Uh, let's set this one for uh, two minutes. Two minutes, all right, we'll go two minutes again. We're going to raise our dough tray and start mixing once And let's more. put our ingredient chute on. We're gonna put our chute on here. And here we have our oil. And I'm just gonna pour this in while that mixer is running. If it starts shooting the oil out, what you've done is you've actually waited too long. Okay. You've overdeveloped the dough mm -hmm. before adding the oil. So it's not going to mix it in, it's, it's just kind of rolling slide, around. It's going to slide around. Okay. And if you notice right here, you're always going to have a little bit of the sliding, but if you look at the agitator, it's still driving through the center of the dough. Yeah, and right now we're, we're just standing here talking about this, but we could be cutting vegetables, we could be building boxes, anything we need to do. We've got the timer working for us. There's no need to be watching this. So if, if this went on for five minutes, would that be all right? It wouldn't hurt a thing. Now we're going to kick it up to the next higher speed. All right, Tom. So we've got this. Uh, here's our dough after two minutes of mixing with the oil. It's taking on that yellower kind of color. And, you know, obviously you've said this is because of the uh, light getting into it, not necessarily because of the oil. It's a little, it's definitely a little softer, less dry. And if you notice here, uh, there's really very little glute development to this it's right it's kind of thick it's heavy it's not very pretty but you can see how yeah see how rough it is yeah that's exactly. what's responsible for that color okay now if you try to pull it it just tears right that's because we don't really have any true glute development no stretch that's you, what the glute is and doing. you're gonna we're gonna see this change today and tomorrow after it gets uh 
cold fermented in the cooler overnight, we have this thing called biochemical gluten development that's going to take place. You'll be amazed at what we'll see tomorrow. And that's going to take about 24 hours, but we'll get to about that. 24 so, hours. So now we're going to go for eight minutes. On the second highest level, we're going to go to two on our Univex mixer. And we're going to mix this sucker for eight minutes. So now we're getting down to the last 30 seconds here. This has been going for eight minutes now. And you can see this is much more of a cohesive dough ball. Everything's been mixed in. It's got a nice pliable feel. Remember, work smarter, not harder. Uh, you got to dig this dough out of the bowl. This isn't so bad because it's a smaller dough. But if this was a large dough, we could have 80 pounds of dough in here that we need to dig out. I'm so sorry, all, I've, all I've done now is I've just taken the, just a very, very small amount of olive oil. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this in and just letting it go down the inside edge of the bowl. Brilliant. Here I am, that, digging this out with a shovel like that, a sucker, that, right? That is all. <laughs> Let's stop that mixing. It's done mixing. All right. We're going to lower our hook. And that, that is a brilliant tip, Tom. I love that. We're going to get this off of the so, hook here. Ryan, I'll let you do the honors. <laughs> uh, and you tell me if that comes out easier than what you're used to. Oh, it's already good. Yeah, for sure. So what we're going to do, unhook her. Here we go. All right, so now we have our batch. Definitely a smaller batch than what you guys have probably worked with, but I love the tip that Tom... Look at that. Are you kidding me? Right out. Here's your giant dough baby, ready to go. 